What's up guys, welcome back to a new build on the channel. Well, not really a build, but it's just a bit of a job, I suppose you'd say. I've got here a 2007, I believe, VE Baloo. Series one, so we've got the LS2 in this thing. We're doing a complete top end, bottom end rebuild. Just a stock bottom end rebuild. We're not, not going forged or stroked or anything like that. We're just gonna do a, basically a refresh of this thing now. The owner purchased this thing, I think fairly recently. He reckons he purchased it, it was a little bit neglected. He sort of fell in love with it as soon as he saw it. He just really wants to bring it back to its, the best it can be and you know, it's a form of glory sort of thing. So he originally talked to us about doing a cam kit. It's got moderately high case and to the point where I believe probably the cam bearings are probably gonna to need to be do done. And I was talking to Owen about doing a cam bearings about how we have to pretty much pull it down to a bare block and we've decided to just go ahead and do a complete rebuild. That way you've got peace of mind knowing the engine's totally fresh, fresh bearings, fresh rings, you know, and plus we're doing a, a cam upgrade and a CNC head package. So pretty excited about this thing. As with every build, got to do a baseline run to start, see where we're at, but I do love doing these things. I really like HSVs. I really, really do enjoy them. They're such nice cars. Especially love this thing, love the color, love the wheels. I really, really can see why the owner just fell in love with this thing when he saw it. I really can understand. So, well, uh, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's get into it. So guys, what we've got here is a pretty well stock LS2. Apparently it did get LS7 lifters at some point because it dropped the lifter. I've checked the receipt and when they did the lifters, they just put a stock LS2 replacement camshaft in. So it's got a stock cam, it's pretty well stock except LS7 lifters. We've got X-Force headers and exhaust, which is awesome, and our VCM OTR already, which is mapless, so it must have had a mapless tune at some point. So we'll see what it's making on the stock cam. Be a really good indication of what one of our cam and head packages can actually do for your HSV or for your, for your Commodore, so pretty excited. For this thing, we are probably just gonna be using Higgins or Tremaniac heads, I haven't decided yet, but we'll look into it a bit today. I would really like to put the same heads on this that we put on that white one tonner we did and the ones that we've got on the 383 and the VY one tonner. Uh, we really, really like that CNC program. It's by a, a head board that we've been working with for a very, very long time and we are super stoked with that program. The problem we have is the turnaround. He is, you know, a one man show. He's a very busy bloke and unfortunately it just, it takes a little while to get his heads. So being that they're 243s and you can't really, I don't, we don't want to just be swapping them for a set of ported sort of 241s or something like that because it's a HSV, we want to keep the 243s on this thing. Very, very important for just the vintage of the car, you know, they're, they're a pretty special thing. It's not like we can just go swapping them over. So for that reason, we sort of need to send the 243s away and get them back, which means just for a quick turnaround to get this job, you know, in and out, get it done so it's not another car that sits here for six months, we'll uh, just use Higgins, I think. Um, they're still a great head, obviously. Yeah, that's pretty much the plan, so let's get into it. All right, so just initially setting up the scanner, we found a few things. The oil pressure is not reading properly, it's just stuck maxed out, so could be not plugged in properly or we might have a faulty sensor or something. But uh, always good to know these things before we go pulling it apart. So I can see up on the gauges on the center console there, even the, the volt gauge isn't working really very well. It's just pointed directly at the battery, which is really strange. It's charging it. Good voltage on the scanner, so it's got good charge, but for whatever reason, a few of the gauges have been a bit, being a bit funny, so. A few things we'll have a look into while we're going at it. Try and make sure that when the owner gets it back, everything works how it should. A few other little things on it we're gonna fix along the way as well, like whoever wired in these lights has done some voyeur stuff. That's speaker wire, and that's the power for the lights which are over there. And uh, like this is where they've wired them in. You can see that big old lump of solder there. It's um, it's pretty agricultural, so try and tidy this all up a bit. Make it look a bit more factory. Woo. So just a quick run up in steady state and um, it's already just absolutely knocking its head off. So doesn't look like the tune's the greatest. We'll do a bit more steady state, but um, yeah, if it's gonna be knocking this hard, we won't do a baseline. There's no way we'll run this thing all the way up if it's gonna be knocking that hard. It's Seems horrific. Similar. It's a shame, it's always nice to get a baseline, but it's not worth the risk if it's the tune's that aggressive. Seems to have like a bit of a, probably a really aggressive just as it comes 
through one part of the map and then it seems to shut up. It's not, not retarding after that. So we'll do one run, run it right out one time just to get one baseline. what we're working with as a baseline. Not too bad really for a stock cathedral port uh, 6 litre. Stock canned I should say, stock canned cathedral port 6 litre. Um, that's not a bad number at all. So still quite a bit of noise through that run as well so it's good power but obviously um, it's, it's very aggressive to make the numbers and uh, it's, it's not super happy. So normally for a baseline, we like to do three runs to get a good, you know, indication of what's going on over three runs instead of just doing a single run. But just given how aggressive that is, we don't want to basically run this up any more than that. That's going to be it. So it's our base run, baseline. Let's see what we can make out of this thing from here with some nice heads and some big lobe, big lump. Such a nice car. Oh, I really, really, really like it. Every time we do a HSV, I just really, really want one. It makes me really want one. All right, low car is low and a pain to get on the hoist, but we got there. It's also a ute, which is awesome because everything you gotta take off and just go straight into the back and then it's all out of the weather and in there and we don't have to find room for it, which is just one of the many reasons we love utes. So anyway, my chuck is on time lapse while Rex pulls this out. Today's work for Rex here. So, as you saw, got the motor out, all well and good. Just as well, we decided to go ahead with the rebuild for this thing. Uh, the rear main is leaking like a sieve. It's There's oil everywhere underneath this thing. So definitely needed some attention as far as that goes. Uh, but apart from that, clutch looks good. Everything else seems to be pretty well. Looks like to be a fairly new alternator, so should be right there. So anyway, uh, start 
rip it into the tearing down process from here. Get this thing pulled apart, get the heads where they need to go and everything else. Uh, what I'm trying to do is next week, I'm actually going away for a week. So I'm trying to, trying to uh, organize it so that we've got this thing out and pulled down and I've got the block, everything where it needs to be before next week. So that way, all those things can happen next week while I'm away. And then when I get back the week after, I should be able to go pick everything up and then we can get it all back here. Get it all built and get it all back in the car and retuned and uh, back to the owner for a bit of fun. So that's the idea of what's going on. So anyway, the balloon can get uh, all buttoned up and go back out under cover and get into this and pull it apart. So it's tear down day, which is always a fun time. Always good to see what's going on inside, inside engines. So do a bit of a check in here and then to see what we're looking at. So uh, actually are probably going to send the heads to Tremaniac. Uh, I've just sent them an email. I'm waiting for them to go back to me, but just an interest in keeping the work local. Um, Tremaniac are a lot more local to us. So that's probably what we'll look at doing. So first thing we found, we've got one crooked rocker on this side. So we'll have to have a good look at the rocker stand when we pull that off. It's gotta be the stand. Cause when I loosen that, I thought it might be loose, but it was tight. And when I loosened it, it just sort of straightened up. And then when you tighten it again, it just pulls across. Mm. I can see too, it's a bit funny on that, on that trunnion too. Yeah, it could be something to do with the trunnion. Love looking to get it off, but. Yeah, obviously from when it was, I had that other work done recently, they did actually clean everything up fairly well. Apart from that, it's just stock spring. Yeah, stockies. Everything's stockies. Stockers so far. You see, like, that's the one that was next to it. You yeah. can clearly see that wear is on the, the edge, on the of, edge the tip. of the tip. Yeah. Um, so there is a... You know, the top of that valve feels... No, it feels alright. It looks alright. But there's a lot of... Yeah, that trunnion's pretty sad. But, um, this one's not... It's not that much better, really. They're both pretty shit. Classic I tried, old trunnion. I tried Ellen's that trunnions. one on there and it still does the same sort of thing. So it yeah. looks, it's hard to tell, but it sort of looks like that might have been damaged. Damaged, yeah. It seems like this, it might have had one loose at some point and it's damaged that stand. But worn, it, worn it down on one side. Yeah, we've got spares and they're pretty, they're yeah. pretty cheap anyway. We'll so replace we'll the, replace um, yeah, replace the rocker stand. Let's throw that one in. And yeah. this engine obviously is getting a trunnion upgrade as well, being a, an LS that we're building, of course. It's so. getting a really nice trunnion upgrade. Yeah, though. this one's getting the CHE upgrade, which yeah. is, uh, we'll show you when we go to put it in, but very, very nice upgrade. Ugh, why? Just why? All right, so this pull down's moving along. Sorry guys, I didn't bother with time lapse in it or anything. I figure you've probably seen us pull down a million LSs. It so doesn't get much different, but it's been pretty good so far. Rex noticed that on the cam, there is quite a bit of um, unsavory etches, markings, that sort of thing, uh, which is a bit strange considering that uh, we have seen receipts that this thing did receive when it got new lifters, uh, a new camshaft. So my assumption is that it dropped the lifter and damaged the cam, and that's why they've done lifters and a camshaft. This was over 100,000 k's ago, apparently though, or I think it was around about 100,000 k's ago. So, yeah, I guess so. you know, there's a fair few, fair few k's on there. So who knows, but, um, but yeah, uh, that was all we had found that was a bit worrying, except for that, uh, obviously that rocket that you saw before, but we did just find Rex just pulled off this main cap. They all sort of look like that, which is like, that's not too bad. There's just something, yeah, it's had a little bit of something go through it, but nothing. Nothing alarming, but that one's just. But real. then he pulled this cap off, and it's um, like they're deep, deep pit marks. That's had something, something pick up and get dragged around. Yeah, it's not too happy. But uh, lucky for us, it does appear that the crank journal is actually fine. Um, yeah. See, it appears that it's sort of done some damage to the bearing, but it doesn't look like the journal's copped anything, which is uh, obviously important when we're looking at doing a, a stock rebuild. So. All right, guys, so we are completely pretty much pulled down. But you can see these cam bearings, hopefully, in this light. But um, you can see where they start to get pretty thin, where they have a join, because these aren't one piece from factory. And, um, you know, they never, in LSs, they never look too great, no matter how many Ks you've got on them. There's a lot of hearsay about how GM actually did the line uh, honing for the, the cam bores in these blocks. Some people reckon that uh, they line bored 
the blocks with the bearings in place to ensure proper, you know, complete alignment for the cam bore, which we find hard to believe, but we have heard people say it, which would explain why all of them just look worn all the time. But with this thing with 230,000 Ks on it, it is really getting to a point where the cam bearings can start to be a bit of a worry. So that's why we're here doing this rebuild. Anyway, guys, it's the same as everything with a stock rebuild. There's a lot of time that goes into just cleaning parts it's incredible how much cleaning has to go into doing a, a rebuild with the, you know, using, reusing a lot of the components. So, uh, but anyway, good news is all the bores seem great. Lifter bores seem great. You know, all of the, the crank is good. All of the stock components are awesome, which means we should have no issues rebuilding this with uh, what we want to do, uh, which is, you know, Ace. And we'll have some nice Tremaniac ported heads. Uh, we've chosen a cam which we think is going to be a really good balance of this thing being quite grumpy but uh, also still quite nice to drive being that it is you know a manual uh, and a street car and it's got to be aspirated so we want it to be pretty nice to drive but we'll go through all that when we go to put it together so there's no point in me babbling about it now so anyway that's going to be it for this episode guys hope you've enjoyed the bit of a tear down sorry i didn't film it more in depth i was doing other stuff for one and for two it's again it's just much much more of the same thing really uh, not much interesting inside the engine it was all pretty right, so we're all good to go. So anyway, uh, looking forward to getting a few of this stuff, these things back. Really looking forward to getting a set of these heads back from Tremania. Uh, excited to see what they like um, and, and keen as to see some results. So tune in for the next episode. We'll be getting a few things back and putting this back together with new components. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So peace out. See you, bye.